Hey there guys, I'm Will, welcome back to FP1 after the Turkish Grand Prix. And I'll tell you what, first time since we've had that race on the calendar since 2011. Now for that one, I'm up for a few more. I think really for me, this was a race of redemption. You know, you had Sebastian Vettel coming back, proving all the doubters wrong to an extent. You had Alex Albon for a point. I genuinely thought I'd have to use the word Alex Albon and good in the same sentence, which is two, two words I never thought I'd use together. So, fair play to Alex Albon. Lance Stroll as well, after... A, well, a, not the best couple of races, let's be honest. Comes back, gets pole position. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. Fair play to Lance today. Oh, you, oh, you've just got a feel for him, haven't you? But yeah, let's jump into things. So let's start with Stroll then. It's a guy, he's, he's, he's struggled a lot, I think, over the last couple of races. Had a bit of an off weekend at Portimao, then an Imola, he hit his own mechanic, and again was off the pace in comparison to Perez. Came back with a bang. And I tell you, for, especially as well, remember that Stroll and his qualifying pace have come under fire a lot. You know, last year, he was god-awful in qualifying. And while Perez was smashing it, he was just absolutely nowhere. So the, the, to see him come back and get a pole position is absolutely amazing. So fair play to Lance Stroll this weekend. In the end, I think, looking at the race, it was strategy. I think once the Mercedes really turned its tyres on, and, you know, and, and I think as the tracks up to dry up, that racing point, it wasn't in its element anymore. But the sounds of things had set it up for those wet conditions. So... As it started to dry, you know, that, that pace was going to start to kind of fall off. And, yeah, I, I don't think there was any way that Racing Point could have won this weekend. I think they got the best result they could have got. You know, they had to split strategies between uh, Stroll and Perez at the end of the day. And it obviously paid off for Perez. He stayed out, got that second place. Brilliant for him, by the way. Stroll, sadly, he's just a casualty in that. We also can't talk about this weekend without mentioning Lewis Hamilton. Seven World Championships. And that is, that's amazing. You know, at the end of the day... The fact that in he's been in the sport 12 years. Schumacher it took him about 13, 14 to get his seventh. Hamilton, you know, I think, especially this weekend as well. I do not know. The man is the, the man is a wizard. I think at the end of the day, that's that's the best way we could put it because he took those tyres. It was like 30, 40 laps old at the end. They were effectively slicks. And when it started raining at the end, we saw Perez really, really struggling. Almost lost that second place. And yet he managed, he was faster than Bottas. Valtteri Bottas, we'll get on to him. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, Bottas was... It was it was tragic today. But yeah, fair play to Hamilton. Let's talk about his teammate because... Oh, boy. I mean, I think for... for well, excluding Albon, 2020's disappointments, i.e., you know, Bottas and Ocon, didn't have great weekends. Did, well, no, that's, that's a lie. Ocon had a very good qualifying as well. He was a lot closer to Danny Rick, but the race wasn't brilliant. You know, that clash between Ocon and Ricardo, you know, racing incident, I think it's lap one, it's raining, what can you do? Then Bottas steams up his inside later. I, I don't know what he was doing. Bottas, I mean, he spun on, on his own. Uh, there was a point where I thought Sebastian Vettel and Bottas had swapped places. Because, um, I mean, Bottas, he got out-qualified by an Alfa Romeo, which is usually what the Ferraris do. Uh, and, it, yeah, it just... I, I, I don't know what it was playing at, because every time there's a yellow flag, I thought, oh, Bottas has gone again. And soon enough, cuts to a replay, and he sat pirouetting around like he's some sort of ballerina. So, uh, yeah, Valtteri... I <laughs> You know, I'm, I think he's just happy he signed his contract earlier because it's really not been great. You know, I, I saw a stat. There's 100 points now between Bottas and Hamilton. Hamilton has more points than Red Bull do. I, well, more points than Max Verstappen, effectively, uh, and the little contributions that Albon's put in every now and then. But, you know, that is amazing. Just going back to Lewis, I'm, I'm going to go all over the place here, but Lewis, fair play. Um, Bottas, he got lapped. He got lapped. He got lapped. But let's, let's move on to a more positive note. Alex Albon, at least at least to an extent. When he started absolutely smashing it on those inters, there was a middle phase of the race where he was the quickest guy on track. Quicker than Stroll, quicker than Perez, quicker than Hamilton. Reeling in the top two like nothing else. And I think by the end, it was just the fact that he couldn't overtake. And obviously with no DRS because it was wet, he wasn't going to get that assistance anyway. And yeah, I think the tyres just got too hot. And sadly after that, he just kind of fell behind. You know what, Alex Albon, I... I do you want, if he got that podium, I feel like Red Bull would have snapped up for next year. I think Red Bull are looking for that excuse now to keep him in the team. Today's performance might have done it. Might have done it. I think, you know, Red Bull, they're really trying. They're really, really trying. And, I, and usually this is the segment where I go and say, oh, Alex, you know, how's he cocked up this week? But no, genuinely, fair play to Alex today. I think he was a lot happier as well. Much better qualifying. 
I think he's starting to prefer these wet conditions to the dry ones. So, yeah, I bet he's not particularly happy with all these, oh, it's going to rain in five minutes comments that are coming over the radio because when, when it never actually does. But, um, yeah, you know, fair, fair play to Alex this weekend. I'm not. I'm, I'm going to take a week off ripping into him and let's just hope that, you know, this momentum can carry on now. So I think it's worth noting, once now we've spoken about Albon, let's, let's look at his teammate who, yeah, didn't have a brilliant... Well, no, in fact, the run-up to the weekend was brilliant. He was fastest in first practice, second practice, third practice, and I think the first two qualifying sessions, then Stroll pulled something. I don't know whether he, he got his free trial of the of the 2020 Mercedes and put it on pole. That obviously ran out mid-race. But I'll tell you what, Max Verstappen, today, I, it just, the word that sums it up, and the Dutch, the Dutch fans are going to kill me for this, but I don't care, is desperate. Genuinely just desperate. He was going for moves that... That, that weren't on. I think the best example of that was on Perez. Uh, it was the, it was the fast right-hander uh, just going to the DRS struggles. There was no DRS at that point, so he wouldn't have that to to help him get through. But it was on the it was on the inside, and that's the point where you just pull out. If it was in the dry, then fair enough. I'd say yeah, go for it. Okay, but it's not. It's chucking it down with rain, and he just he he, he loses the car up there, ends up on the curbs. Perez could have taken out his teammate. Could very easily have taken out his teammate if uh, if, it, if it's spun on stay on the track. So, yeah, I, f for me, not one of Max's best races. The run up to the weekend, like I said, was brilliant. He was absolutely on fire. I thought he was going to win this one. Even coming into the race, I thought Max is going to get a good start and he's going to run away with this. But he just didn't. And for someone who is is known for being a very, very good wet driver, I'm thinking, you know, Brazil 2016 or Germany 28, 2019. He just wasn't there today, and I feel like as as the race went on, he got more and more desperate, more and more frustrated, and that just led to more mistakes, more spins, and you know, obviously I'm not a Formula 1 driver. The, the, the comment I see the most on this channel is people saying, oh, you're not an F1 driver, you can't slag off drivers. Well, yes, I can, because, you know, Max, we expect a lot better from him, uh, looking at his wet weather performances, but it just felt very desperate and very, very unnecessary this weekend. So let's move on then and talk about that final lap oh i tell you what i i i was a little bit part of me was a little bit gutted i was kind of looking at the grid the way the grid was set up i was thinking we're gonna get a surprise winner it could be stroll it could be perez mid race oh maybe it's albon and then it was all kind of slipping down then hamilton just goes off into narnia and god knows what he did to his car but he did something and it's just on a completely different dimension to the rest of the grid and it was all going to set them down. I was just like, oh, okay, you know. And then, and then the Claire managed to get into P3. I was like, okay, right. We got, we got a Ferrari in the top three. Nice. Perez is still there, chilling in P2. And then the last lap happened. I think Perez ran wide. It wasn't really shown on the cameras live because everyone was focusing on Hamilton winning his seventh world title. But we realised, oh, hang on a second, it's not over. Uh, so yeah, I think Perez ran wide. That led the Claire to get through. But then Perez got a run onto the DRS straight. I think he might have got DRS as well. At which point the Claire bottled it. <laughs> Round wide and Sebastian Vettel. Can we just take a minute to? Oh, I'm so happy for Seb. I I, I used to despise him. I used, back in the Red Bull days, I was not a Seb fan at all. Didn't like him. Maybe that partly because I was a Weber fan, I think. But since he's gone to Ferrari and since he's kind of matured a bit and he's become less of a of of, of, of a whiny brat, let's 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 put it that way, and become more of a wholesome driver on the grid. I've I've really grown to like Seb. I really have. And. It was just so good. After all the struggles that he's gone through this year, to go through and take a P3 and what what very likely could be his last podium for Ferrari, maybe his last podium in Formula 1. We don't know what that Aston Martin car is going to be like next year. You know, I'm just so happy for him. And I think it's, yeah, it, it's. I'm hoping it's going to be that confidence boost as well. I mean, I said that about Albon before with his podium in, in Mugello, and that obviously didn't go, go anywhere, but... I feel like, I, I just hope, this is giving him that confidence boost. Maybe he's understood something with that Ferrari. Turkey, we know, was a very good track for him. He's won there before. Uh, and, you know, I think that really showed this weekend. And that start, that start, he started off way out the top ten. I forget where it was, um, but he went out in Q2. And while the clerk kind of struggled, he said, absolutely cut through the field. It was brilliant. Made, you know made every opportunity count so it was good to see the Seb of old for once and everyone as well said Seb can't race Seb can't race well he proved today that you know he can cut through the field at the start of the race and yeah he was maybe the bottleneck at, at, at maybe the mid phase but as he started coming back as well uh, and, and you know taking taking advantage of all those opportunities at the end of the of, of that last lap 
fair play to him. And I'm so, so happy for the guy. But yeah, those were then my instant reactions for the Turkish Grand Prix. Let me know what you thought of the race. I thought it's up there with some of the best this season. We've had quite a few good ones. We've had a few duds. We've had a few, I, I, I won't lie. But this was up there with, with some of the best races we've seen um, the, the, this year for sure. So let me know what you thought. Do you want to see Turkey back? Because there is that chance with Vietnam, obviously, no longer being on the 2021 calendar that Turkey or Portimao, one of these circuits that we've we've um, had this like emergency race at this year to kind of boost up the numbers of Grand Prix, could actually make a permanent fixture on the calendar. Would you like to see Turkey? Because with a race like that and with the overtaking opportunities that are there in the dry as well, I think it's a perfect opportunity to bring it back. But those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And of course, if you haven't already, make sure you go and like and subscribe with the video as well. If you want to see more of my opinions, you can follow me on Twitter as well. It's at fp one will and All links to that will be down in the description below. But yeah, that's all for me this weekend. Hope you have a lovely rest of your week. And I will see you all in the next one.